collinear and scalar multiple. So let's try to understand how these terms are related. Two vectors x and u are collinear if and only if it is possible to find a non-zero scalar a such that x is equal to a times u. So let's explore this definition, right? When we say two vectors are collinear, then we are trying to say that they are in the same line. That means they are parallel. And they are exactly in the same line, right? They could be in opposite direction. Now, we say two vectors x and u are collinear if and only if it is possible to find a non-zero scalar a such that x is equals to a times u such that you can write vector x in terms of u by scalar multiplication so that is what we're trying to say here right so so if we have a vector let us say u as this let's say that this represents vector u to us now if i do 2 times u then how will it look like 2 times u will be this and this. So this is 2 times u, correct? So we can write this as 2 times u. And how about minus 3 times u? Minus means the direction reverses and it will be like this, right? 1, 2 and 3. So these are my approximate drawings just to illustrate the point. So this is minus 3 times u. The numbers 1, 2, 3, whatever we are writing before u, they are all real numbers and they just multiply the vector and they don't really change its direction at an angle but the change could be either in the same direction or opposite direction. So what you observe here is that either it remains same or it could be opposite direction changed by 180 degrees if a, the scalar multiple, is negative, right? And important to note that A actually belongs to a set of real numbers, so A can have any value which belongs to a set of real numbers in this condition. So you'll observe that you can actually place one vector on the other in a straight line. That means collinear. So that is how we get collinear vectors. The condition for two vectors to be collinear is that they could be written as scalar multiples of one another. Right? You, you could see this as, let us say, x. Right? In that case, you could write u as minus 1 over 3 times x. So still, either way, it could be written. Right? So scalar multiples produce collinear vectors. That is what we need to understand here. Now the question, next question is, if possible, express x as scalar multiple of u. So in this question, x is equals to 8i minus 6j. i and j are unit vectors along x and y axis. And u is given as 12i minus 9j. So if they are scalar multiples, then one vector can be written as a scalar product or scalar multiple of the other, right? Now, if these two vectors are collinear, then we should be in a position to write one vector as a scalar multiple of the other. So let's try to do that. So what we have here is 8i, and I'll use column matrix for this, so 8 Okay, now I've written like this. So let me just continue with the normal. So we have 8i minus 6j. So just forget about this. Should be equals to some constant, let us say a, times 12i minus 9j, right? Now that means that by scalar multiplication, we will get here 12 times a times i, that's the unit vector i and j, minus 9aj, right, should be equal to 
8i minus 6j. Now if these two vectors are equal, in that case their direction numbers should be equal or their components, these are their components, they should be exactly same. So in that case 8 it should be equals to 12a, so we can write one equation that is 8 equals to 12a and the other is minus 6 is equals to minus 9a. So let's find the value of a from here. So a is 8 over 12 and 8 over 12 can be written as 4 over 3. Uh, 4 divided by 8 is 2, 2 over 3. So 8 over 12 is 2 over 3. And from here what do we get 8 as? So here we can solve for a and we will get minus 6 over minus 9 equals to a which is if you divide both by 3 you get 2 over 3. So we get exactly same value of a right. So that means yes if I write a I could write 8i minus 6j as 2 over 3 times 12i minus 9j. So if I can do that, that means that vector x is a scalar multiple of vector u, right, where a is 2 over 3. Since they are scalar multiple, they are collinear. So that is what we conclude from here, right. So let's do the same exercise of part b. So here we are given the same vector, different vector. Here we are given vectors in a different notation form. So x is equals to, if x is equals to a times u, then they will be collinear, right? So we are trying to write them as a scalar multiple. So let's, so let's try to express x as a scalar multiple of u. So it becomes x equals to a times u. x is 3, 4 and u is 6, 10. Now if these two vectors are equal, then their components should be exactly same. That means 3 is equals to 6a and 4 is equals to 10a. Now what does this give us? So 3 divided by 6 is a, that means a is half. In this case, we get 4 divided by 10 is equals to a, and if you simplify this, you get 2 over 5. Now these two values of a are different. They are not same, and therefore we cannot write x as equal to a times u, right? So that means that we cannot write this vector x as a scalar multiple of u, right? So here they are non-collinear. In example A, we could write x as a scalar multiple of u. Here we could write x is equals to 2 over 3 times u, right? So this one is a collinear set of vectors. So this exercise is going to help us a lot in the next chapter which in which we are doing linear combination and spanning set of vectors and then you will get to know how to identify whether the vectors can span in xy plane or in the given plane or not so you'll learn that the scalar multiples or collinear vectors cannot explain So we will soon apply this knowledge while doing linear combination and spanning of vectors. I hope you find it very interesting. Thank you.